Hello, Internet, and welcome back to the world's loneliest podcast. My name's Finn, and I'm your only host because it's so, so lonely here. It just is. So, in today's episode, I got a little bit of stuff to talk about. I feel like the past couple weeks have been super eventful for me, and I've had a lot. Uh, So, I don't have as many cool things, but I do have things to talk about. And we're going to start with one that's fucking wild. Um, So... A guy who grew up with my father uh, and his, like, siblings um, was in the news recently. And what happened was he had some mental issues. And after a certain amount of time of having those issues, he uh, went a little cray-cray. And it was either his brother or, like, his his housemate, um, something like that. He, like, chopped them up into little pieces, uh, and, like, tried to burn all their belongings, and da-da-da-da-da, um, but that's wild, because I've eaten dinner with that guy, which, kind of crazy, that that is just, like, this guy, who, who I know, killed somebody and chopped them into tiny pieces, and had, like, a history of, like, domestic abuse and stuff, so, like, bro could have done more things similar in other situations, which is terrifying, because who knows what else bro did, and then because he was so close to my family, who knows if something happened there, but that's fucking crazy, and then another thing happened, that's like the town next to me, a similar thing happened, that's an ongoing story from 2019 till now, but um, Secondary story, in another town, a bit further from me, uh, some man had, like, a fucking, like, a semi-automatic, I guess, handgun? I don't actually know the full story, but bro just, like, took that shit and just started spraying. (laughs) So, two wild, murderous stories right off the bat. Uh, next thing I want to get into is, uh, Hi guys, it's me, Finn, and guess what? I, 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 sorry, my brain keeps shutting down. Um, this is kind of weird, but like, I feel comfortable in who I is, and I know it's kind of weird to jump from, oh, here's a situation that's super weird and, like, murderous, and then the next situation it's like, I feel good, uh, but I have been feeling good about myself recently, which is weird, and I don't normally, so that's been different, uh, I'm sorry if this episode is a little all over the place, all the other episodes have just kind of gone, whereas this episode has taken me I've been planning it all day and getting, like, thoughts put together, and I haven't done that because I don't want this to be super professional or whatever, but I just didn't have a lot to talk about, so I had to, like, think. Uh, And there's even stuff from, like, the past couple weeks that I haven't brought up because I keep forgetting, and I can't think of that. Um, But I've been feeling good about myself, which is weird because I'm also less talkative than normal, which just seems, like, the opposite. I feel like I... I don't know, maybe I talk whenever I'm anxious or something, but I've been talking a lot less. Uh, but I've got content news uh, for the people who are here for wrestling stuff. Uh, after I record this, I'm recording a wrestling, like, fantasy booking thing. Uh, we'll get into, like, wrestling stuff on the podcast later. I don't like doing that super early. Um, next content thing. Uh, I've got a new series that is starting tomorrow, I think that, yeah, because this is Friday, Saturday it starts, um, for Pride Month, uh, it's called Sagame, which is, uh, an old meme about it's gay month, uh, and it's a series where I'm gonna be talking about a bunch of random Pride stuff, the first episode is just me saying that we're going to, the second episode is me talking about the negative stuff within Pride Month, um, most of it, not not a lot of it's, like, the fault of those who celebrate 
uh, it's like companies and then like the bad eggs and then people who were against it, stuff like that. Um, but I plan to do a lot more. I want to have some fun with it. I want to talk about personal stuff. I want to talk to friends. I want to do that sort of stuff. Um, I want to have talks about specific things. Maybe talk about, like, an episode here about, like, trans people. And then an episode about people who uh, who are learning that they are in, in the, the queer umbrella. And they don't know how to talk about it. Or they don't know what questions they can ask and stuff like that. I, I don't know the full extent of it, but I know I want to do stuff with that, uh, series. I have a couple ideas planned. There's a YouTuber who I really fucking like, who I, uh, look up to a lot, especially as a, as a, as one of them, as one of them, um, uh, channel Icky, or on social media is as Big Icky, um, she's fucking great, uh, she is pretty much a how-to channel for trans people, like, Here's, uh, information on how to deal with, uh, like, bad self-thoughts, and here's, uh, information on how to do voice training, and on how to dress better, and on how to show your friends and family, and da 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 da, da. and I think she's fucking great, uh, and I want to do a couple things similar to that, um, so expect, expect this month to have a lot of those, um, because it's, it's gay month. Also, don't expect a game to be a one-time thing. I'm probably going to do it every month. Uh, not every month, every every year during Pride Month. So that's cool. Um, more content stuff uh, soon. Um, within the next month, I'm going to be moving. Not house. I'll be living in the same house. But I'm going to be moving from the bedroom I've been in, which is in the middle of the house, and everyone can hear me, and blah, 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 and my family is very conservative and doesn't like that shit, they don't know I'm any of that shit, um, but it's very hard to record stuff in there, I'm moving to a room that isn't connected to the fucking house, it's like, I mean, like, it has a wall that touches the house, not really, it's got, like, a walkway between the house and the room, um, but the room, I'm excited, it's much bigger than my room, it's got much better lighting, uh, it's got, like, shit in there that's gonna help with the audio, including carpeting, um, the bed's more comfy, uh, it's got, like, a desk set up and shit already, and I'm gonna move all my shit over there, and I'm gonna be able to record, I'm gonna be able to do more, I'm gonna have to not come out here to record things, like, the first episode of Game, which will come out tomorrow, as you see this, uh, like, that's the first thing I've recorded in that room in, like, a month, I think. I recorded something in my closet just to test the audio, but I didn't do anything. I haven't recorded outside of my truck and then random spots outside in a month. So, you know, I'm excited to have a recording space. Um, alongside that, I just, I, I'm a really private person. I know that makes no sense with how much of myself I put online, but, like... I don't do, I don't do much, I'm a very low-maintenance human, like, I eat, I drink, I sleep, and then I just chill, so, I mean, I'm, that'd be cool, I'm excited to have my own space, I'm excited to record in that space, I'm gonna be able to have more freedom to record, I'm gonna have more time, uh, I'm gonna be able to record better things, because after I move, after I get my PC moved in there, I can start fixing it, because there's a lot of shit I need to fix with it. Uh, to be able to do pretty much anything on it. But uh, once I get moved over there, I should be able to make more shit. Um, the Spider-Man videos I've been wanting to make about, like, my fantasy, like, ideas of, like, how I'd make a Spider-Man, like, film. I don't know the right term. Just franchise of just films. Uh, I want to make those, but I it's hard because each one's going to be, like, two hours of me talking. And there's going to be, like, six or so of them. So I can't, I like... You know, I, I want to be able to sit and do that. Or at least be able to, like, pause the recording and take a break if I need to, like, go do something. Where With my laptop, I like, I can pause, but if it's paused for longer than 30 seconds, it just stops. And I can't, like, put the footage together. So, until I get all that stuff fixed, I kind of just 
am stuck recording like this. Um, for those who really like the podcast, it's not going anywhere. I will still be recording it. Um, I'll probably still record out here. If I'm not recording in the truck, I'll just like do it in my new closet. It's it's got like it's gonna have nothing in it because I don't I don't wear clothes. I have like eight t-shirts and five pairs of pants and then like a couple sweaters and a couple hoodies. Like I don't I don't do clothes. So I'll just record in there if I need to find a better spot. It'll probably be better audio and lighting and shit, but it'll still be the loneliest podcast. I'd probably dim down the lights, though. Um, so that's a bunch of content stuff, which I think is fun. Speaking of... Um, speaking of content, you should check out my best friend over at youtube.com slash Uh He's been my best friend for 10 years. He's the only person I know who I think is funnier than me because I'm an egotistical asshat. Um, he is very funny <laughs> and he's been very uh, not schedule based with YouTube stuff. Like he's just been kind of making stuff every once in a while. Uh, but as we get closer to me and him moving in together, uh, it's much, like, I guess easier for him to make things. And he uh, just got a job, so he's going to have money, which means he can have Wi-Fi, which means his stuff won't take eight years to upload. So that's cool. Um, so go check out Eminem Beans. Speaking of, uh, I have a short coming out over the next couple days. Um, I haven't made shorts in forever. But, uh... It's me reacting to a video of his that I am in. So if you want to see the type of stupid activities we get into together, you should check that one out whenever it comes up. Um, so that's the that's the little Amit and Beans plug. If you're interested in, uh, after I move with him, uh, stuff made bet- with me and him and others, we will invite other people to join as it's not just our thing. Uh, YouTube.com slash Mega House Studios, or just go on YouTube and search Mega House Studios, M E G A H O U S E S T U D I O U S Studios, maybe? Uh, I can't spell. Um, but yeah, go check out Mega House Studios. Uh, there's only two videos on there now, and they're currently just me talking, me with long hair. So if you see it and you're like, that doesn't look like the same person, I don't have the same hair, but that's me, I promise. Um, but yeah, those are the shameless plugs of the day. Uh, actually, one more shameless plug. Uh, Twitter.com slash RealFinsFolly. That's me. Go, go. Please. I need to change the one, because the one on my YouTube thing is wrong. That Twitter doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, go to my go to my Twiddle. I post stupid things. Usually autistic rants and loving goth people and dommy mommies and also wrestling. Uh, so go check that stuff out. Uh, I think I'm done with plugs today. Sorry. Um, next thing I want to talk about, uh, is an, we're, there's a couple Ammon and Bean stories I want to get into. Um, so the first one, uh, I went to Ammon's house and we spent Christmas together. And, well, sort of. I came home, like, the day before Christmas. But, uh, at the time, he was living about two hours away from me. And I went to his place, and we just... I was there for a week, and it was great. Some of the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. Car. Um, but it was... It was great. And there's a lot of stories from it. And due to how long it's been, it has now been... Christmas was a year... So, it's been a year and a half since we've seen each other in person, so it's been long enough that the people coming from him to see this haven't seen these stories, you guys haven't heard these stories because you're my viewers and this is not, I have a different channel than I had then because the old one didn't get taken down but it got taken away from me and da 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 da, so I just thought I'd, I'd have like an episode or like a segment where I just talk about Ammon and shit. Um, So the first thing I want to talk about is he made really good steak. Like, steak so good, like, you you feel like a little bit of movement downstairs, you know what I'm saying? Really good steak. And then, (laughs) 
we are eating it, and I he made me laugh, and I have like an acid reflux problem, and due to him making me laugh, I kept hiccuping and hiccuping and hiccuping. Then I started coughing and coughing and coughing, and then I threw up an entire like fucking twelve ounce steak, tastiest shit I ever ate, right back up. Absolutely decrepit, nasty shit, and it made me so mad because it tasted so fucking good. Um, and he was also a little upset, uh, because at first, I think, I, I can't speak for him, but I feel like at first he thought I threw up because it, like, tasted bad or something, and he thought I was being an ass, but no, I ask every reflux, I die. Um, another food story, uh, from an Amadon trip, when Minions The Rise of Gru came out, we made our own version of the Minions meal, we just made, like, eggs and bacon and shit, and he made eggs and he ate them, and then I made eggs and I was gonna eat them. And the eggs I made tasted like, like if you put butter into a pan, let it melt, and then you laid a tortilla in it. And then when the tortilla got coated in butter, you flipped it over and just covered it in like collard greens or something. Like it, they real not good eggs, not good eggs. And then I threw up from that. And then his dog ate the rest of my eggs. Um, we both made content about making eggs. So that's... Funny. Um, similar story about me hiccuping. One time, me and him were playing Fortnite. And I kept hiccuping so hard that I threw up twice and then was bleeding. Because uh, I have... A bunch of dental issues, which hopefully get fixed on the third. Um, but like that was happening, and then I came back. We're we're on on the phone and playing Fortnite, and I come back, and I'm still alive somehow, and so is he. And then we went on to win, and I had 18 kills. He had like 16 or something, and like. It's just fucking crazy that I went for, like, five minutes to go throw up, and then we won. Another over-the-phone Amadon story, the most, the most genuinely angry I've been, I think, in my entire life. Uh, we're on the phone, and we decided we wanted to watch a movie together, because we hadn't watched anything together since we had been in, in person, which at the time was only, like, four months. Now it's been fucking 16 or some shit. I don't know. Um, but we decided on watching the movie Over the Hedge. Um, so we load up Netflix, go to Over the Hedge, and we try to sync our times up. And we sync it from the beginning. Two seconds go in. Pause for me. No remote touched. Paused. Dude, go back. It paused again. So we did that. And then we did that. And then we fucking did that again, and then again, and then again, and then it finally started going, and it got, uh, to the point of the opening credits where, um, fuck, what's his name? What's the raccoon's name? I don't know. The raccoon has the little grabby hand thingy, and he's, like, trying to get the bag of chips out of the vending machine by sticking it through the fucking, like, little shaft gimmick. And it got to there, and, um, it paused again. And it just kept fucking pausing. And I remember three visuals. Uh, like, do not cross tape that says Bruce, Bruce Willis. I think it's Bruce Willis. I could be wrong. Uh, but it's that... The visual of him trying to get the fucking chips, and then the visual of the fucking, the like, trolley, cart, what's it called? Wagon? The little wagon that he's gonna put all the food into? Like, the visual of the back of it. That's the only three frames of this movie I can remember now, because it just kept fucking pausing. And we spent, like, an hour trying to get it to work. And I was so genuinely pissed off that, like, I broke my phone. I, like, blew up the speaker in my earbud. Uh, 
I was like screaming, uh, fucking to this day, him talking about over the hedge pisses me off. Like he can bring it up while we're in like a group call or whatever. And I will genuinely just get so incredibly pissed off. And it's like so fucking stupid, but like, I can't handle it. And I'm afraid to try to watch the movie again. Cause what if it fucks up? I feel like I'd have to get it on like DVD or some shit to get it to work. I mean, fuck. Makes me mad. Yeah, it makes me fucking mad. I had to take a couple seconds to breathe because I was going to genuinely get a little upset over that. Um, I guess I'll do one more Amadon story before the, uh, before I end the segment of Amadon stories for today. Uh, the very first time I went over to his home, I want to say he was 17, I was 16. And we are in his backyard. It's me, him, and a mutual friend of ours, uh, Jake. And we're all hanging out. And it's been a great, like, day so far. Um, if you've ever seen any of my content where I'm holding a sword, I got it from this, this hangout. And we're hanging out. And his mom pulls up. And he's like, I want to put you on the roof. So he's going to put me up on the roof and I'm going to go around to where the front door is and scare the fuck out of his mom. Well, what happens is he goes to lift me up and he thinks he has my, he, he thinks he's got like a grip like this around like my leg. Uh, and he goes to pick me up and then he just fucking pulls my cock, just bare hands on my dick yanking that shit as he tried to so he picked me up by my dick and it hurt a lot and I have like a very small like scar on like the bottom of my penis from where he just fucking um so that shit hurt really really bad uh it got me a sword though and it was the first time I ever tied my hair up I think that was the same day so that was fun um so that's going to wrap up the, the Amadon stories for today. And I'm going to get into my review of uh, WWE King of the Ring, which happened Saturday. And then um, AW Double or Nothing happened on Sunday. And I watched I watched it, but I don't have as much to say about it because I'm not an AW diehard. I'm a, I'm a Fed guy. Um... But that doesn't mean... Wrestling fans need to understand that you don't have to hate a company because you like another one. Uh, so to begin... King of the Ring... Uh, <coughs> was very fucking good. Uh, pre-show match... Women's tag team... Uh, Indy Hartwell... Candice LeRae versus uh, Bianca and Jade. Good match... Uh, Bianca and Jade have, like, a very convoluted but really dope finishing move. I don't know what they call it. It was, like, a, like a, DD, like a DDT into, like, a, a suplex gimmick. Um, I don't, I don't know what to call it, but it, it looked neat. Um. God, I'm yawning. I've been up all day. I had interviews and shit, which I'll get into later. Um. It was a good match. Jade and Bianca won. Wouldn't have expected them to lose yet. Um, then we had uh, Liv Morgan, Becky Lynch. Pretty good match. Um, it was going alright, going alright, going alright. Uh, Becky has Liv in a disarmor. Um, and Dominic Mysterio is like, I need to help Becky. I gotta help Becky. Liv can't have this fucking belt fuck live and he throws the fucking steel chair and he's like use it I'm gonna get the ref and then um Liv Morgan used the chair and ended up winning uh which makes her a two time women's champion one time Smackdown one time world heavyweight I think well technically the Smackdown title is the world heavyweight title I think yeah so I mean 
on a technicality, she's a two-time SmackDown champion, but you get it. Um, but I, I liked it. Um, I love the storyline of Liv versus Rhea. I love Dominic's whole point of being in it. I fucking love Dom Dom. Uh, he's actually the person I talked about making a fantasy booking thing earlier. He's the guy I'm doing the fantasy booking of. I love Dominic Mysterio. Um, and I'm tired of people thinking Dom's doing it on purpose. He's a good boy trying to please his mommy. It has nothing to do with Liv. Liv is just coercing him and making him look bad. Um, after that, I believe we go straight into the triple threat, which was really fucking good. Um, Chad Gable, Bronson Reed, and Sami Zayn. Good match. Sami won. Uh, at one point, Chad had uh, Sami in like a like a German suplex position, and he was telling Otis, "Hit him! I got him! Hit this bitch!" And Otis kept stopping, stopping, getting ready, stopping, getting ready, stopping. And then he finally goes for it, and Sami ducks. So Otis just fucking clocks. Just fucking clocks the fuck at a at a gable. Um, there was another really good spot. Uh, Bronson tries to do a moonsault. Gable gets the fuck out of dodge. He does a moonsault. Uh, near fall, really fucking good. Uh, Sammy retained, which is what I thought was gonna happen. I felt like he's not gonna lose it in a triple threat. Maybe at SummerSlam he loses it to Gable. I don't know, but uh. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and that's great, and I'm excited. Uh, and we'll get into what happened with that on Raw uh, when I get to that. Um, Queen of the Ring finals. Um, Valkyria versus Nia Jax was a surprisingly good match. Nia Jax has had a good run, which is weird, because I'm one of the people who just straight up didn't like her. Uh, but I can't sit here and be an asshole. She has had a genuinely good run since her return. Uh, her two matches with uh, Ripley, her fucking shit with Becky, this, her Queen of the Ring run in general was pretty good. Uh, but Queen Naya, she's going to be an, an annoying bitch about the fact that she's the queen, and I think it's good television. So, thumbs up. Also, the fucking bonsai drop she does to win this match is nasty. <laughs> Like, it, it looks like it fucking hurt really bad. Uh, apparently, she's not hurting people anymore. She used to hurt people for real a lot. Uh, so, I think on this return run, she hasn't hurt anybody. That bonsai drop looked, dis like, destructive, and I'm pretty sure uh, Valkyria was fine. Um, so, dope. <sighs> God, I'm yachting, dude. I love staying up late to record. It definitely doesn't fuck me. Um, King of the Ring Finals. Um, better match than the women's match. I think more deserving winner. Uh, but overall, both tournaments were fucking dope. Uh, Randy Orton versus Gunther. Great fucking match. Um, I've been wanting Gunther to fight out of the big dude for a fucking minute. He hasn't fought another big guy since last year's SummerSlam against Drew McIntyre. Since then, he hasn't fought another big guy, I don't think. No. Because Money in the Bank, he fought Riddle, then McIntyre, and then he kind of started the Gable shit right after. He's had matches that aren't Gable, but he that's where the Gable shit started. Um, so yeah, he's been... He's been fighting smaller dudes for a while. Not that those are bad matches. I love him against a smaller guy. But him against a bigger guy is also good. And it's fun to see Randy getting to be that bigger guy. It's fun seeing Randy get protected. Um, Randy made a comment on a podcast where he said something along the lines of, I've been here so long and I'm so blessed to be at a point where like, I'm able to be, take charge and be like, I'm not going to do this or I'm going to do this. Um, and basically he just talks about the fact that he doesn't, he, like, doesn't need to do stupid shit. Like, he can wrestle an entire match, and he doesn't have to, like, slam a guy one time. And if you watch modern-day Randy Orton matches, he doesn't. He, like, he does the power slam, but that's not really him slamming you. It's you running and him just moving. Like, 
he doesn't slam people. He doesn't have to destroy his shoulders. When he takes bumps, he doesn't have to, like, fuck his up, fuck up his back more. Um, and this match is a very big testament to that, because Gunther's... His kind of entire thing is just striking and slams. He doesn't do crazy visual shit. He just hits you, throws you, slams you. And Orton sold the fuck out of the whole match. He sold his elbows. Uh, he sold his... I think it's his right knee... He sold the fuck out of his knee, sold the shit out of his back the whole match, hit three different RKOs, um, he hit one, and Gunther kind of like, he does that thing that the monster heels always do, where they like, they sell that it hurts, but they get the, they sell that it hurts like dog ass, and then they just get up, uh, so he doesn't no sell it, he just kind of moves, um, which was cool, I like it, um, the second one he sells... And then the third one, I think it's the third one, he ends up, like, he takes it and he would get one, two, threed, but he rolls out of the ring at the last second. No, the second one he rolls out, he takes the third one, and then that's how the end of the match happens. He rolls Orton up. Um, Orton's shoulder was up a little too far. I believe it was a botch. I don't think it was a planned thing. Um, but Gunther is God. I love that man. His IC title run is perfect. I wouldn't change a damn thing about it. Um, 666 days is like the perfect number for this big monster to hold a belt. Um, I think Sammy was a perfect winner of the belt afterwards. And I think what the IC title has become right now is the workman's belt again, which is fucking awesome. Um, on top of that, I think Gunther is probably the best bell-to-bell -bell performer in the WWE right now. Um... I mean, you could argue Sami Zayn, you could argue Gable, you could argue Cody, but I don't think anybody goes out there every single match and just fucking has a banger. Because I can't name a bad Gunther match since it, since his IC title reign started. Matches with Shinsuke, Ricochet, Drew, Sheamus, uh, fucking Riddle, Sheamus and Drew, uh, fucking Miz, uh, he... He went back back against Ricochet again. Um, like, uh, fucking everything. Sammy, Gable. Uh, I think he had, like, a tag match against, like... I can't remember. It was, like, him and Ludwig versus somebody. And he, that was good. Like, he doesn't have bad matches at all. Just banger after banger after banger after banger after banger after banger. Very good wrestler. I love Gunther and him becoming King of the Ring. Perfection. It's great. I love that a lot of people win King of the Ring and then they put the crown on and they get goofy. I like that he won it and now he like holds it in his hand and like he comes out in his like fucking like dress suit and he's got like the jacket on over it and he's got the crown just in his hand holding it like a trophy and I think that's fucking sick. Uh, him cutting his own promos is also sick because Gunther's a good promo, um, and I hate motherfuckers who say he isn't, because the only complaint they have is that he can't respond to the what chants. He doesn't, he doesn't fucking speak English that well. <laughs> like, if, if you, if you listen to a Gunther promo, sure, he's got, like, a heavy accent, and some of the words are hard to hear, but he sounds like a foreign monster. Like, he sounds like he's going to kill you, and that's what he's supposed to sound like. And his words are really fucking good. And he sound... He's like the Bane situation where, like, yes, he's bigger and stronger than everybody else, but he's also a fucking master strategist. And in ring, he is not just like, oh, I'm physically stronger than you. It's I'm stronger, I'm faster, I'm smarter, I have better technique, I'm more skillful, I am better in between the ropes, outside, every... He's he's perfect. And that's the whole thing. He's like the, uh, the Ivan... Uh, is it Kolov? What's the guy's name from Rocky 4? Or is it Rocky 3? It's Rocky 3. He, he's literally just that character, but better. Way better. And the people who were like, he can't do a promo. You're a racist asshole. That's what you are. You think he can't do a promo because he doesn't speak perfect English. Fuck you. It's like the people who think that Kazuchika Okada can't cut a promo because his English is like, okay. That dude can cut a fucking banger of a promo, especially if it's short. God, Gunther's so good. People should respect that man. 
but I, I love him coming out with it like it's a trophy. I love that he was like, I want uh, Damien Priest. I don't know why I went Russian. That's Ilya's gimmick. Uh, he said, I want I want Damien Priest to SummerSlam. He didn't he didn't say Cody. He wants Damien Priest, uh, which makes me think that either Drew McIntyre is going to be champion by the time SummerSlam rolls around, or Gunther's winning the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, but that's exciting, and I'm happy for Big Gunth. Big old Gunth. Um, Gunther's awesome. I love that fucker. <coughs> and Amadon's the only human who knows how much I love Gunther. I rant about that motherfucker, like, at least once, once a week. He's like... If he stays on this trajectory, he's gonna be, like, in my top ten wrestlers ever. If he just keeps... If he keeps putting out bangers, he keeps getting pushed, he's gonna be... He's gonna be up there. Um, after that match, and King Gunth, the King General, uh, after that, uh, Cody Logan's really fucking good. Um... Logan hits crossroads on Cody, doesn't work. Logan hits a frog, doesn't work. Logan uh, is talking shit with Michael Cole, uh, and that leads to Cody getting like the upper hand on him for a dive. He puts Cody on the table, and there's a fucking dope drone shot of a drone doing a 360 around Logan. And as it gets to like a good angle in front of him, he does like the thing where he spits the prime. And as it gets behind him, he timed it perfectly good on him. He hits the frog splash through the table. Best looking one he's done so far. Sends Cody in. Uh, hits him with the brass knuckles, I think like three different times. Cody's a fucking beast. And he's just like, no, I got this. And then Cody, uh, Cody nails a vertebraker, uh, which is illegal. You're not allowed to do that in the big dub, but he can. Oh, yeah, baby. Fuck, yeah, I love big band moves coming back. Cody hit the Vertebreaker. AJ hit Cody with a burning hammer last month. At Mania, fucking Sammy brought back the top rope brain buster. Uh, fuck, yeah. I love... God, I love wrestling. Fuck. Um, but the match was really fucking good. Um, I think Cody won, yeah, Cody won with the Trinity of Crossroads, which I don't hate. Crossroads is a pretty cool move, and seeing it multiple times is intriguing, but, like, when you have to hit your finisher three times, get a new finisher, because it's not a finisher, it's not finishing. Uh, or, like win most matches with one, at least, because he beat, he did, like, nine to Roman Reigns to win, and then he beat Cody with one, no, uh, he beat AJ with one, so the fact that he had to be, he had to do three to Logan says that Logan is three times as good as AJ Styles, which is just not accurate, and also doesn't fit, like, the, the lore of the WWE, of, like, where those two are, one's a United States champion, one's a former two-time world heavyweight, uh, fucking two-time U.S., one-time IC, one-time tag, fucking, like, one of the best ever. And they're like, yep, you're one-third of this new guy, because that makes sense. Um, but overall, fucking dope pay-per-view, cool audience reactions. Uh, these, these Saudi Arabia shows are getting better. Uh, Triple H hasn't put out a bad pay-per-view yet. Every pay-per-view since this motherfucker came in has been a banger. Uh, SummerSlam in August is two years of, of Papa Paul being in charge of the big dub, and I'm happy, baby. I'm so happy. I'm so fucking happy, dude. So I'm, I'm genuinely excited about that. Uh, a couple weeks from now, we got Clash at the Castle in Scotland. That's going to be a banger. The only match that's been announced as of me recording this is Drew versus Damien. Um... And a lot of people are being like, oh, it's not going to be that good. Damien Priest isn't a bad wrestler. People just don't like him because he's not an amazing promo. And he's like, he's not a bad promo. He's just not amazing. But I mean, he's just a big, tattooed bad guy. He, he doesn't need to talk perfectly. Um, and his voice is fucking, like, extremely fitting of his character anyway. Like, he can just say a couple words. He doesn't need to, like, go on rants. But uh, that match is going to be pretty good. Uh, I'm expecting either Drew McIntyre wins the World Heavyweight title, or 
uh, Damien's going to win, but if Damien wins, it's probably going to be a thing where, like, CM Punk causes Drew to lose, which then causes those two to have their first match at SummerSlam, I would assume. I would assume their first match is at SummerSlam, and then maybe they have a match later. I also don't know, because they're doing Clash at the Castle in June, so are they doing... Are they doing a pay-per-view in July, or are they holding off until after SummerSlam? Because if they're doing one in July, it's going to be Money in the Bank. Which means I have to, like, think about who I think is winning Money in the Bank. Because who do I want to win it? Dominic Mysterio. Who's going to win it? I don't fucking know. Um, but pay-per-view was fun. I'm excited for the next one. SummerSlam is going to be a fucking banger. I'm expecting a lot of good shit. Um... So, Papa H, don't let me down. I like you. You're fun. Ooh, Bubba, that shit pop my neck. Ooh, let me tell you something, Bubba. So, the next thing I want to talk about is personal life. Fuck! Uh, it's personal life time, baby. Uh, thing numero uno. I hate it here. I fucking... Oh my god, I hate it here. I hate living here. I hate talking to all these fucking people. I hate the way they talk to me, about me, about things that are about me that they don't know, about, like, groups of people that I'm into. It's pretty fucked up. And a lot of times, it causes me to not be a happy camper, and then there's, like, the fucking all sorts of shit. They're moving in there now. I'm surprised nobody's come out here and yelled at me yet. But, uh, I mean... It, it's incredibly difficult to be myself and to grow as a person and learn about myself and to be who I want to be and what I want to be when all the people close to me uh, don't even think that those groups are people and don't even think they're equals and shit. It feels very weird. For those who don't know, I'm gay as AIDS. And my family thinks that that means you go to hell. And that that's not a thing of like, oh, if you... God forgives every sin. Except for some of them. Some of them, fuck you, you go to hell. Um, so that's always fun to hear. Um, that's always really fun to hear. and definitely doesn't fuck with me at all. Um, I'm in a relationship. Uh, the person I'm in a relationship with is a brown person. Uh, my family, extremely racist, uses slurs, uh, completely okay with, like, groups such as the KKK, um, my uncle Tony has a swastika tattoo on his, on his eyelid, uh, and a bunch of white pride stuff down his arm, um, my dad uses the N-word all the fucking time, uh, for no fucking reason, uh, similarly, like, s anything that's, like, even slightly not super manly or masculine, he's like, yeah, you're a faggot to people. Like, my cousin, like, my cousin's skinny, as am I. And due to him not being a big bulky mass at the age of 14, my dad's like, yeah, you're a fucking pussy. You're a faggot. You're a flower boy. Um. And all of that's fucked. Um. Similarly... Uh, the people in my home and personal life, not friends, but you get it, um, they like to, to replace the word stupid, uh, or dumb with retard, retarded, uh, harder versions of re retard, like retard, um, sped, stuff like that, which is, uh, not only hurtful because, like, I have friends that are autistic and stuff. But also, I'm a little autistic bitch. I'm being tested for it more and more as time goes on. And every time I see a motherfucker about it, they're like, let me tell you something. <laughs> you ever heard of ADHD? You got that shit. Ever heard of ADD? You got that shit. Hey, man, if there's a neurological issue, not neurological, neurodivergency issue, you got that shit. Um, issues with, with like, uh, your, your, um... Issues with, with your, uh, like, motor skills and shit being messed up from trauma and whatnot, you got that shit. Uh, and they treat it like 
retard is just the word stupid. Uh, and then whenever I try to talk to them about being autistic or whatever, they tell me that that stuff isn't real or that uh, I'm too smart to be autistic or that I'm too good at speaking to be autistic. Um, or that if I was autistic, I wouldn't be part of their family. As if, like, that's, like, a thing of, like, oh, you're in our family, therefore you can't be. Um, stuff like that, which is incredibly fucked up, rude, offensive, dismissive of groups of people. Not like they have a problem with that to begin with. Um, but it's pretty fucked. I don't like it. I'm gonna keep ranting about my family. My dad is such a weird fucking person. And, like, not only is he racist, is he homophobic? Does he think that Donald J. Trump should run the world? <laughs> yeah, he does. But also, he's just a fucking weird person. What type of fucking parent is just like, yeah, I'm gonna show you my pubic hair. For, for why? The fuck, why? Just in the fucking hallway in front of the, in front of my bedroom, just like, hey dude, look at my pubes. For fucking what? Like, what? what's the deal there? What was the point in, in like, that back and forth? It's fucking stupid, man. Fuck. Fuck. And then, uh, so, I don't even know if I've talked about this on the podcast. If I haven't, here it is. And if I have, then you get to hear it again. My dad got out of prison and immediately started dating a girl. Uh, and I don't have issues with her. But, uh, two days, two days into dating this woman, he moves her into our house. He doesn't have a fucking bedroom, so they just stay in the living room. So, when they first moved in, there were 13 people living here. Fuck. And then some people moved, they still don't have a room, they just sit in the living room. Uh, and they have a big-ass bed in the living room. And I don't care that they have a bed. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. Have a bed. That's cool. But, like, his niece was over, and she slept on the hardwood floor. She didn't sleep in that bed. She didn't sleep on the couch close to the bed. They made her sleep in the floor, which I think is kind of fucked. Like, at least just let her on that couch. Like, I don't, uh, shut the fuck up. She's a tiny child, and you're adults. Go fuck yourself. Um, and then... The sheets and stuff they're using aren't theirs. They're mine. They stole my sheets and my pillows and my blankets and all that shit. So fuck them. Um, and then the thing that genuinely pisses me off is... Earlier today, my cousin was babysitting very young children. She's 15. One of them was like 10 and another was like 8, maybe 6. Very, very young children. And my dad just fucking like, straddles his girlfriend in front of these tiny little children. How do, how do you not see that as fucked up? It's like, there are, there's like a six-year-old right here. Bed's like three or four feet from that six-year-old. I'm going to straddle my girlfriend. I'm going to straddle her and make out with her whilst she's like pushing and slapping at me in front of this child. Speaking of, he just does that. Like, he just starts, like, kissing her and shit, and starts, like, fucking, like, grabbing at her in front of everybody, in front of me, my cousins, my little cousin who's 10 and has issues with, like, he's already, like, hypersexual for some reason. Does it in front of his own mom, his aunts, uncles, whatever. It's fucking weird. You don't just do that shit in front of everybody. Especially not, like, your children and your nieces and your nephews and your mom. It just feels fucking weird. But he just does that, and he doesn't see anything wrong with it. Um, so that's pretty fucked. I think that's pretty fucking weird. Um, I feel like... When I get moved into the room that's outside... Maybe, I pray, maybe I can be free of all that bullshit. Obviously, I'll still have to deal with it, but, like, maybe less. Fuck. Um, another personal life update. I did a job interview today uh, for, like, a customer service style thing. 
And I don't know if I got the job yet, but if I do, it's going to be $25 an hour. It's going to be, I don't have to go anywhere. I'm just going to be answering phone calls at my house and doing like online appointments and shit for people to sell them cutlery. Um, which is fucking dope and would make me a very happy individual if I could, if that works out, I'm going to be extremely happy. And that means I can do everything here and I don't have to like waste money going to a job site and I don't have to fucking deal with that bullshit. I can just chill and just do everything. Um, which moving into the extra room is also going to fucking like help with the job thing because I'm not going to be like, my bedroom is not very large and doing everything in there sucks. Uh, and hell, half of that room isn't even mine anymore. It's just storage for other people, because fuck me, right? So, like, having different room and shit, I think, is going to help. And I'm going to be able to, like, do everything I need to do out there without it being merged with everybody else's bullshit and being out there whenever I'm doing these appointments and, like, talking to people and shit through, like, the calls and whatnot. I'm not going to have to worry about loud motherfuckers right out my door I don't have to worry about people barging into my room. None of that bullshit. Um, another issue with the room I'm in now is I don't have ventilation. So, like, everybody else in the house is, like, cold and complaining about it. And then I'm in my room where it's, like, 84 degrees. Fans are on and everything. 80, 84, 85, sometimes 90 degrees in there. The rest of the house is cold. And I'm like, I fucking don't know what to tell you guys. I'm fucking hot as shit. Um, and out there, it's got its own air con and shit. It's got two air conditioning units, which is fucking dope. It's also got heaters and shit. So, I mean, I'm going to feel a lot better when it comes to that physically. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for that room. Excited for that womb. I'm excited to be in the womb again. I'm going to take a piss break. Hello, peoples. I'm back. Um, since it's gay month, um, starting the day after this goes out, um, I guess it's a good time as any to talk about this. I'm gay's age, and um, I'm a little bit of a trenny, and I'm a trenny source rex, um, and I have, I'm bad at words, I'm so sorry, I'm genuinely trying, I swear, I have been trying to figure out how the fuck to do a girl voice, because I've never had one, um, and I don't really, I'm not doing it now, uh, I, I don't really have one, and I'm really bad at it, uh, and sometimes when I do this, it's just me, like, I'm hyper fixated or whatever, and I'm all fucking autistic, Sometimes I talk a little bit like this, and people think this is my girl voice or whatever, and it's not. I'm just autistic. But I've been, I've been, I guess, I've been trying to uh, do like a girl voice or something, and I don't know how the fuck to do it. But I'm gonna try to do an update thing at like the end of every month. This month I'm not doing it because I'm embarrassed. But I'm gonna try to do at the at the end of every month. I'm gonna try to do a little. Like a little bitty, like, hey guys, look, it's it's uh, my voice. I try a girl. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. This is the part of the podcast I do it every time. This is the part. Where's my light at? Where's my light? I need to use it. Oh, that's ow, my eyes. This is the this is the part of the podcast where I tell you guys that you have to go to my Discord. And hang out with me and the boys, and with a bunch of the viewers, and also, alongside hanging out with me, the boys, and the viewers, go on the Minecraft server. We have a Minecraft server, and after I get my shit moved, I'm gonna be able to play on that. So go play Minecraft with the boys, and post memes, and be funny and shit. It's in the description, guys. Go to the Discord. Come on, now. Shout out Floris, by the way, you fucking Dutch bitch. You fucking, you little fucking Dutchie. The Flying Dutchman. That's what I'm going to start, that's what I'm going to rename you that. Your nickname in the Discord is going to be Flying Dutchman, you fucking pussy. 
but yeah, shout out, shout out Floris for doing everything for the Minecraft server, including putting together the mod pack. Um, if you go to the Discord and you're interested in the Minecraft stuff, there's a, a thing down in the server. Uh, there's like a bunch of channels for it. Um, and if you have any questions, go to those channels and just at Floris. Um, he's got his own like shit set up. You can, you can do that. So, that's the Minecraft and Discord shout-out for the day. Uh, on, it's time, guys. It's that part of the podcast. I talk about YouTube, two YouTube channels I like. Two whole YouTubes. I like a YouTube. Do you like YouTube? I like YouTube. Today, I talk about YouTube channels that I'm... a fan of. Uh, the first one is Cereax S. E. E. R. E. A. X. Cereax. Uh, Dion is one of the funniest motherfuckers in the world. He's got about... He's got a little over a million subs now. Um, he makes primarily Dragon Ball content. Uh, so if you're into that, go check him out. He's funny as shit. Um, he's got a lot of long-running bits. Um, a lot of his linguistics are really fun to listen to. Um, he, he's got his group, every, every YouTuber pretty much has a group at this point, um, well, he's kind of a part of a bigger group, but the three idiots, which make amazing content together, uh, sometimes as friends, sometimes as enemies, whatever, but the three idiots is really fun, uh, it's Dotto Doya, uh, Rhyme Style, and C Reacts, three fucking hilarious human beings, um, but, uh, if you wanted me to point out, like, what should I watch? You should watch, um, season two of Month of Mayhem, which is a Cereax, uh, like, playlist. It's him and the boys playing, well, sometimes him, sometimes the boys, but I, I like him and the boys best, uh, playing horror games and shit. And that's really fun, listening to them freak out together. Um, and then if you wanted something more calm than that, well, I say calm. Less horror, I guess. Um, I would say to watch their... Fuck. Either their series on Dragon Ball... Uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, where they do raid bosses. Or where they do raid bosses on uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, Whichever one you prefer. One, One's more of an arena fighter, uh, whereas the other is more like old school Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat style uh, fighting. Both I find intriguing and I like watching and playing. I love those games. I have too many hours in Xenoverse. It's not that good of a game. I don't know why I have... It's like, it's great, but like, God, I don't know why I have so many hours in that game. Uh, yeah, that's the shout-out for C-Reacts. I love that fucker. He's also a dad, so you should give him money. Um, and... That, that's the end of the C-React segment. Now to get to the next YouTube YouTube channel. Hello, Internet. Welcome to part two of the shout-out segment. Shout-out time. Uh, channel this time uh, does more long-form content, stuff that I would be super interested in making in the future. Um, but uh, the channel's The Cursed Judge, or Cursed Judge. They're kind of spelt the same, so I don't know which one it is. It's The Cursed Judge. Um, he makes really fucking good, high quality, in-depth, uh, mostly video game based, like, deep dives, retrospectives, I guess another term could be just like, like he finds an idea he's interested in, and then he just fucking dives head first. Um, if you want my favorite thing he's made, it would be, why is the out of bounds scare, I think that's what it's called, here, I can figure it out. It's like, why is the out of bounds, uh, yeah, why is the out of bounds so terrifying? Um, which is probably about a year old now. I could have just looked then, but fuck me. Um, but it's really fucking good. I think his content's fun. I think he puts a lot of work into them. I think they're extremely well thought out and very inspiring for what content can be on YouTube. Um... Because I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna stop making this, like, low quality shit. But I do want to make higher quality things. And he's one of those people who make me, 
He's, he's one of the people who makes me want to make higher quality stuff. He genuinely inspires me to be a better creator. So, extreme shout out for the Curse Judge. I think he makes some of the finest long long form shit on the internet. Um, and then because I'm talking about video essays, fuck it. I'm gonna talk about one more uh, YouTube channel for this for today's episode of the shout out segment. Um, I just want to talk about uh, fuck. I I hate not knowing shit before I say it. I'm pretty sure. God, I made a short about him. I fucking I. I love this fucker. Why can't I? Yeah, it's Bizly Channel. Thank you, Internet. Uh, yeah, it's Bizly Channel. B I Z L Y C H A N N E L, or at Bizly Channel Y T. Um, he makes really fun fucking video essays. Um, my personal favorites are his video, uh, The Art of Boss Fight. I played and ranked every Spider-Man game, and then, where's the other one I really like? The Twisted Beauty of Horror Games. Uh, but he makes fun shit. It's almost always video game based. I love his fucking content. Uh, he hasn't posted anything in about four months, but, uh, he posted a thing a few weeks ago talking about he's working on something. So he is making shit. Uh, but I, I love his personality. I love... Just the the energy he brings, the passion for what he's talking about, and the overall positivity he spreads, even whenever he's being, like, negative. Even when he's being, like, a critic of something, he's still incredibly positive overall, and I absolutely adore that. Um, I'm a fan. I love him. I've been watching since he had, I think, 2K or something like that. Um... And I was there when he hit 100k, and I like was I commented on that post, and he responded, and it felt real nice to me, and I made a little short about it at the time. But I fucking love that dude. He's awesome. Uh, he also just seems like an incredibly sweet, genuine, wholesome, funny fucking human. And being a sweet, cute, incredibly funny, uh, genuine personally fulfilling for those around you person is something that you can it's pretty much all you can ask for um so big shout out to uh to bisley big shout out to the curse judge and big shout out to c reacts and his boys other three idiots dot odoya and rhyme style um what on every style here um so that's gonna do for the segment of here's people i like um Today, I get to, uh, time to talk about my relationship again. But this time, it's not all positive. <gasps> what? I know, relationships aren't always 100% perfect at all times. No shot. You don't mean that, do you? Um, so as I'm recording this, it's Thursday. My partner... Has not talked to me since Sunday. And I've started to worry a lot. Um, not only am I worried because like, oh, what if they're hurt or if they're sick or something. But I'm also worried because the last time they were gone for a week, they were in rehab. Which... Was helpful for them. But also... If they're back in rehab... Then... Shit. Because that means they did something they shouldn't have. But I'm also worried... That like... I'm the issue in some way. Because in every relationship I've ever had... I've been the issue. Um, for the most part. Um, so I worry about that. And I'm, I've, like, a day of not talking, I'm not the person who, like, freaks out about. It's cool. I get it. Sometimes you just don't talk to people for a bit. Two days is a lot. Three days is a fucking lot. Four days is a lot. And it's been Sunday. We talked at, like, noon Sunday. So, half of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third day. It's Friday as you're seeing this. And I would, it's, it's midnight 
it's Friday now, so it's been, at noon today, will be five days of no speaking. Uh, and I doubt they went from a week in rehab out three days and then a week in rehab, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like... I feel like either they fucked up or... Either they fucked up and are in rehab or I fucked up and don't have a partner anymore. I don't know what I would have done. But I've been freaking out about it. Because we were getting along just fine. Like... Like, genuinely perfectly. Saturday night, and then Sunday morning. And then I just haven't heard anything. Just radio silence. And I've started to, like, genuinely freak out a little. And I don't know what to do. And I'm really worried and self-conscious... And I feel really bad about myself, which is weird. I know I was talking earlier about feeling good about myself for once. But it makes me feel very bad because it it makes me think I've done something wrong. Or it makes me think that I've done something to push them away or something. Uh, I don't know. I'm scared. Really, really fucking scared. But I'm not allowed to be scared. Fuck that. I ain't no liberal sissy. I'm not some, 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 some liberal. I don't cry. I'm a six foot four, 256 pound straight white man. I don't feel emotion. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that, and that scares me a lot. Scares me, worries me, kind of hurts, because like, if they're in rehab, right, cool. And it's a, it's modern it's a modern day thing not to know phone, phone numbers by your but just off the dome that's cool, but if they're not, then why doesn't the person who says they love me want to talk to me at all? You know, I don't know. I'm rambling and ranting and losing my brain. Uh, So I'm going to take a quick intermission to breathe, and then I'll continue speaking. I've inhaled oxygen, so that's cool. Anyways, um, I guess there's one final little segment at the end of this podcast before I I wrap things up. Um, This is the last thing I'm recording. Because I've decided that I'm going to hold off on my fantasy booking thing until maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Um, but if if I don't record tomorrow, this is the last thing I'm recording before I go in for my oral surgery. Um, and I'm going to be pretty fucked afterwards if I can uh, get if I can get myself or people around me to record it. I will post it, but I'm going to be like extremely fucked. Uh, and then I'm gonna be in a lot of pain after, after, after my drugs wear off, I'm just gonna be dead for a while. Um, I'm gonna try to still make things, but if I physically can't, then I can't. Um, but yeah, I'm getting three, three wisdom teeth removed, two are normal, one's like way the fuck over here on like the side, instead of up here where it should be. 
Um, and then I have a tooth. I think it's back here. Uh, and there's no tooth below it because I never grew one. So what's happening is the one up top just keeps growing down. And they're going to have to take it out. So I'm going to be... I'm going to have two less teeth on this side than the average person. And then I have my wisdom teeth over here getting moved. And then my wisdom tooth over here getting moved. Uh, so I'm going to be a little a little fucked. It's going to be a little fucked. It's going to be a little fucked up. It's going to be fucked up. Um, but... Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna take care of myself and take care of my tooths. I can't smile with teeth. I have a weird, like, shaped face. I just... I just can't. Um, but with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the podcast. It's almost 1am. I've been up since... A long fucking time ago. <laughs> I got up at like... So it's Friday at 1am. Almost. Um, and... So from from 1am right now. Back. One day I was awake. Not to... I got up at like... 7.40 on... Wednesday. So... From 7 on Wednesday to 7 on Thursday, that's 24 hours. And then from then to now is 12 more. So 36. I've been up for a little... I've been up for around 40 hours. So I'm gonna, in this, set up the stuff to post it. And then probably go the fuck to bed. Um, But thank you guys for all your support. Thank you for being so helpful all the time. And I want to tell you guys that I fucking love you fuckers. I love you fuckers, man. Let me tell y'all something. Okay, my friend. I like you. I'm a fan of yours, my friend. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something, huh? Let me tell you something. I love you fuckers. So, uh, you know, I fucking like (laughs) y'all. Bye-bye.